All right, welcome back, everybody. You're watching the Premier League Season 3. My name is Triumph Man, and I will be casting Virtus Pro versus Fnatic Raid Corner. This is game number one in a best of three series between these two teams. And the last time that they met up, I believe, was about two weeks ago. It was Fnatic versus Virtus Pro, and Fnatic actually came out on top. Uh, this might have been Starlight, I'm not dead sure which match that was, which league that was for, but I just wrote it down er from earlier. There you go. Naga Siren, though, the first ban by Fnatic, followed up by a Rubik ban from Virtus Pro. And Virtus Pro has been a team that has been not afraid to use the new and improved Nakes. If they uh, get, if they see a situation where it's going to shine, I believe they may pop it out once again. It is, it is a very, very deadly pick, but we'll see. Normally see it when they can get a lot of negative armor in, as well as some decent blink uh, positioning heroes. So stuff like Linnea goes extremely well with the Nakes. They've run it in some extremely effective combos. Now the question is whether or not Fnatic will ban it out. They do have the first pick, so if they don't ban it out, they could in fact just pick it up for themselves. But they ban the Darkseer instead. Now what will Virtus Pro get rid of here? We'll see. Still those uh, nasty junglers left. Chen, Enchantress, Enigma all available if they want to go for that. And of course, you a Batrider as well. In fact, Batrider, of course, quite a scary... Nope, never mind. Batrider gets banned by Virtus Pro. They decide, you know what, let's get rid of that new guy. He's, he's a little OP. He's been buffed a little too hard. A lot of people are extremely scared about him. Banning him out Templar left, right, and center. Assassin. And Templar Assassin will be picked up by Fnatic. Not only is it just a fantastic pick, but at the same time, it will prevent Virtus Pro from going the TA Nakes combo, which, I, I'm going to be honest, it is pretty disgusting. It gets around Nakes' mobility issues with his investing. jump jumped inside Lanaya. She jumps towards a target, and then they go to town on him. And of course, a negative arm from Mel just means once you start getting hit by Feast, all of that physical damage just gets so out of control, it's not even funny. Especially if Nakes gets his Stygian Desolator. Of course, he tends to go for the armlet first, because with that one second cooldown on the toggle, it's pretty nuts. Jakira and Enchantress first from Virtus Pro. They go straight for their supports. Jakira being picked up, the hard support. Enchantress here likely to be that soft support slash jungler. Looks like VP are looking for some early tower downs here. Of course, Enchantress can, can pop out of the jungle, cause a lot of trouble. With Jakira backing up, whichever carry they decide to go with. In fact, I wouldn't mind seeing Alashrak being picked up as a semi-carry. Farmer in this situation, it would work nicely. Auto uh, Liquid Fire, Enchantress's Creep, and then Edict as well will take apart towers very quickly. Plus, it's also a very dangerous combo. Plenty of damage there, plenty to disable from all those three heroes. But we'll see what Fnatic decide to pick up to counter. They do have the double pick here. They might just go. For some, they could just go for some AoE team fight here if they wanted to. Some nice supports. Or they could grab up those really nasty combos. Of course, you pick up stuff like if you if you're ever unsure, just go. You know what? Stuff like you've got a double pick. Enigma Tidehunter done. You, that, that stuff is just downright nasty. The amount of AoE CC. If you're ever in doubt, just pick stuns. Just pick stuns, support stuns, that sort of stuff. It's very hard to make a mistake with that. Now that said, right now, VP have a decent amount of push happening. Some decent nuke. And also Enchantress is pretty resilient as well when she comes to the early game. Although that said, towards the late game, she starts to peter out indeed. She becomes rather very squishy in the late game. Early game, early mid when there's not that much boost and burst running around. Not too bad, but as it is, Fnatic decide to pick up Venomancer, some decent counter push there. Also, Titan have been grabbed up as well, so they've got their own AoE CC for the team fights. Also, the fact that he goes nicely with Templar Assassin. The Gush, negative armor from Gush, you throw in a meld on that, That's that becomes very easy to tear a hero apart. But a lot of AoE damage there from Venomancer and Titan. We'll see what Virtus Pro decide to follow up with. They could definitely use with a decent... Well, they've got a decent farmer at the moment for Enchantress, but they could do with a power... So I, if they could get a power farmer in there to get the early pipe out, that would not hurt at all. Venomancer... And they go for the Brewmaster. Okay, Virtus Pro, plenty of teamfight potential there themselves. Brewmaster and Titan sort of changed places for a little while. Back and forth. Titan was the big go-to bruiser, bouncer hero. He would just get up the front of the fight, cause a whole bunch of havoc. And basically make it very difficult for team and for an enemy team to push past him. Then when Brewmaster came out, Puppy said, Oh, you know what, this is the most OP hero in the game short of like. And teams started picking up and banning Brewmaster left, right, and center. He sort of stole the spotlight from Tyner, but as it is, Tyne Hunter has sort of basically resurged, become more popular than Brew. Brew is still definitely a strong hero, just not as popular as he used to be. He was very much a flavor of the month hero, but as it is, he's back in form here. We'll see what Virtus Pro decide to do with him. Nature's Prophet being banned by Fnatic. And getting rid of that split push potential, he definitely could have been a suicide solo if necessary. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I try to kill myself. <coughs> oh boy. VP's turn to ban. 
Still a few nasty heroes on the board there. Fnatic could pick up something like a Chen if they wanted to. They could quite easily slot into that, slot into that line. If they're worried about a Chen and Chen going to war in the jungle, they could decide to ban that out there. At the same time, still plenty of teamfight oriented heroes there. Again, I bring up the Nigma. Nigma is still definitely quite a powerhouse hero. Definitely a ban worthy hero. We see Naga Siren, and also Rubik has been banned, Bat Rider banned as well. Reserve time. We're running out of the regular, the sort of the uh, usual suspects, just sort of spilling over into now the different heroes that they can ban, and they ban out the Chaos Knight. I honestly don't know if they would have gone for that, but they could have gone, they could have quite easily actually gone for a Chaos Knight Wisp combo if they wanted to. As it is, Chaos Knight has been banned, so we won't be seeing that now. I honestly don't know if they would have gone for that. No, not a, don't think it really would have fit in there all that much, but as it is. Hard carries though, hard carries could definitely still slot into this if they wanted to. Fnatic could decide to get rid of the anti-mage. Anti-mage is always an issue. Even the Void as well. Void is always obviously an issue as well. He's definitely, as we saw last match, a powerhouse hero indeed. Especially once he starts to get his farm out of control. Ten seconds remaining. Next ban for Fnatic. What will they go with? I'm just looking at Virtus Pro's line. They could probably get rid of some of the salt. In fact, they pick off Dying Dirge, interestingly back. enough. I was about to say they could get rid of some of the farmers at the moment because they have the supports done. Virtus Pro, their supports are done and dusted. They've got Enchantress. They've got Chikira. They're all set for supports. They're looking for a solo mid and a suicide hero if necessary, or even just another primary farmer. On the other hand, Fnatic probably have their supports done, assuming... That, uh, that said, they could possibly be sending Trixie or something as a Suicide Soul with Tidehunter, so we'll see. But I think they're probably, again, looking for Primary Farmers. They have most of their supports done, and they ban up the Night Stalker. Back. Honestly, haven't seen a lot of this guy, to be honest, and it's mostly coming to the fact I feel he's kind of lackluster lately. He's not that awesome on ganking anymore, because it's just a thing. Since he was popular for a while, but since the hero pool has opened up a lot, I think he's... Uh, Usefulness has diminished quite quite a lot. There are just better heroes for the job. It just comes to the fact he can only gank during the night. He's only useful generally for ganking during the night time. He's not got a lot of AOE CC. He doesn't have a hard stun. Not even that good in the late game. Unless he does something, unless he does something cute like Russian Arganims, he just doesn't really bring that much to the table. That said, Rasta being banned out by Fnatic now. So get rid of another team fight slash pusher. And Rasta could have fit in there, definitely could have fit in there, but at the same time, don't know if they really would have fit. I mean, they could have thrown him in there just to sort of get a little bit of farm. I mean, hell, he's still a, he's still semi-decent at a solo mid if you throw him in there. It's not the worst thing in the world to have happen. Fnatic, though, still looking for, I'm pretty, actually, I'm getting the feeling Titan may be the suicide, so they're probably looking for another support here. Virtus Pro, though, definitely looking for some farmers. Ten seconds <laughs> The final ban will be Broodmother. It's definitely a possibility. Broodmother could have gone in there quite nicely. That said, they have the AoE to keep her under control. Jakira with Dual Breath, Liquid Fire. They've got plenty of AoE from him. Broodmaster obviously also pretty good if he pairs up with another hero can keep her under control. So I don't think they had to worry too much about it. At the same time, she's just a downright annoying hero, so may as well get rid of her. If they don't want to have to deal with her. She's definitely still a very strong hero in the current metagame. That said, she has to be more careful with her spilings now, just because they're worth a lot more in terms of bounty. Once you get a mess of them and you lose, say, 10 of them, it's an extra 50, 100 gold here or so. Definitely needs to be careful about it. And it will be the Chen. Virtus Pro not banning that out. So Enchantress and Chen like her to go to war with their creeps. Let's see what they go with, though. Now the fourth pick for Virtus Pro. They are still looking for some primary farmers here, I feel. Solo mid, maybe a suicide solo as well. Unless they're planning for a 2 1 2 setup, although that's actually it'll be a 1 2 2 setup just because they would have Enchantress jungling. Let's see what they decide to go with. Although that said, it's likely they're going to be up against an enemy jungler plus probably a dual lane in the in the hard lane. So it's in the, in the enemy safe lane. So their hard lane will need to probably be a suicide solo just because they send two heroes here. It's unlikely to win, and basically it'll be two heroes will wind up under farmed, under leveled. As we saw last match, Naga Siren and Dirge, even though they got off to a good start, they got shut down pretty hard once a few heroes popped out there, and a Shadow Fiend being picked up. The question is, will they put the Shadow Fiend solo mid, or will they do will they do like uh, Fog does and put him in the safe lane and just farm him up in there? Both, both I think, are quite possible, but we'll see what they decide to go with. I think it's probable that Shadow Fiend will be in the safe lane because Templar Assassin, 1v1, Templar Assassin versus Shadow Fiend. Templar Assassin is a lot stronger, just hero-wise. 
She does manage to counter the... She counters the burst damage from Shadow Fiend quite nicely. If he misses a raise... If he misses a couple of raises due to refract blocking them, he's just he just lights out for him. He can't he can't fight up. So I think he'll be screwed away in the safe lane. Or if he's in the mid it will be a dual lane. I mean Jakiro plus Shadowfin could be a quite a quite could be quite possibly a dual lane. Brewmaster could try and solo the safe lane by himself and they could have a suicide solo in the form of, say, a Windrunner if they wanted to. But we'll see what they go with. I still think either way, they're looking for a suicide solo at the moment. If they go with Shadow Fiend in mid, Brewmaster, or they, I mean, Brewmaster probably more likely to go in the mid just because he can handle, he can handle a Templar Assassin a little bit better. He's just a bit beefier. And now the final pick for Fnatic. They have their support sorted, so it looks like they need another primary file. I think in this case, Titan are likely to be the suicide solo. In that case, Shadow Fiend, if Titan is going to be a suicide solo, Shadow Fiend could quite easily farm his lane. It's going to be Queen of Pain. Queen of Pain, I think in this case they're going to have Queen of Pain farm. Now, Queen of Pain as a farming hero is not bad. She gets an early sheep stick plus given levels. It's not bad. Like, Queen of Pain can gank, but if you have another hero like Templar Assassin, who is honestly... Honestly, I feel she's a better ganker. Queen of Pain is given more time to farm, more time to level. She can pop out those really... Like, she wants some expensive... Like, she can early... Early uh, BKB, early Hex, and then get in there with an early damage. It's, it helps her out so much if she gets time to farm. But she can, if necessary, get called in to fight Weaver. during the mid-game. And this Weaver pick is... Ooh, I'm not sure about this. I'm not a huge fan of Weaver. Now, that said, though, he can take the Suicide Soul, and they do have some negative armor being stacked up there between his bugs as well as Shadow Fiend's presence. That said, we'll see how it turns out. Honestly, still not a huge fan of Weaver, but we'll see how it turns out for him. And yes, the final match between Moscow 5 and Quantic has been postponed. Quantic has had to go play Evil Genius, has needs to go and play Evil Geniuses right now. In Prepare fact, they're playing against them battle. in the Raid Call Cup. And obviously, we also had to get the Virtus Pro versus Fnatic underway as well. It looks like a five man sweep here from Virtus Pro. Let's call out the players though. Alright, so playing for Fnatic on the Radiant side, we have Oh My Schneckles, that's Fly playing Venomancer, No Tail playing Chen, Aero playing Templar Assassin, Trixie playing Titan Hunter, and Hanny on the Queen of Pain. Now, playing for the Dire side, for Virtus Pro, we have KSI playing Enchantress, Airman playing the Shadow Fiend, and uh, who's that? Tame My Way playing the Brewmaster, Bandit playing Weaver, and NS on Jakiro. Well, we'll see how that works out. I'm still a little unsure on Bandit playing the Weaver. I honestly feel they're a better Suicide Solo option, but we'll see how it turns out for him. He will be up a, up against a relatively rough lane here, and look, they've already got Sentry Wards as well. That's just going to be a nightmare for him to deal with. Playing a slow, playing a nuke. Stun, Sachen can come out from behind as well. This is going to be an annoying lane for him to deal with indeed. We'll see how it turns out though. And the other issue is when it goes wrong, it goes really, really wrong. There's not a lot he can do about it at all. Brewmaster will be taking the mid. Shadowfiend taking the top lane. The battle begins. A safe lane. He will be against Trixie. And this is what we've seen for Trixie before. When he can't farm lane, he just focuses on ganking and leveling for a little bit. And then he goes back to his lane to farm. But either way, he should be okay for a little while just because Shadowfiend doesn't hit that hard. Devil until he gets a few souls up and running. And it depends whether or not Jakira bothers harassing him earlier. Or if he just goes, you know what, you can farm against that, alright. Let me just go into the jungle and stack and pull. Just depends what he decides to do. In fact, he's going to come out here straight away. As they actually get the... First wow. Blood. Wow. Just a little. <laughs> okay, I'm not sure how that one went down. That is definitely surprising, considering they don't have really any decent CC. They, they have a slow and that's it. They have no... How did that happen? Denied. I need to go and get the replay of that, because they have no burst nukes there. No burst news that they have exactly a slow there from Venomancer and just I I'm at a loss as to how he managed to let that happen. But oh well, okay, Weaver already already don't like Weaver as a hero anymore in this metagame, but he's already managed to get himself first blooded there. Could have come to worse I mean honestly if he was getting it first blooded, that was the best moment for it, because he's already back in the lane by the time the first wave is here. And also, he didn't actually lose very much. He lost like 50 gold, so there could have been a worse moment for him. You know, four minutes, two to four minutes in, if he lost the first blood there, that would have been more painful than right now. So, that said, still annoying that he gave it away to Queen of Pain. She'll have an early bottle out or the like fairly soon. Shakira now just trading hits with Trixie as they get another kill there. 
in the mid, they jump mid and bring him down with an early gank there as well. The net creep proving to be too strong, and that's already a bad start for Virtus Pro. Down two kills already. So I'm expecting to chat the light up with Tri. If you missed two kills, you suck. I'm sorry. Now a smoke gank there from KSI. Well, he's smoked up, but doesn't manage to find a gank as Trixie says, I can't defeat Airman. Airman being the Shadow Fiend that will, you know what, that was kind of expect. Not much you could do about that. Now Chen skulking about here in the mid lane. Will he look for another gank? This has been pretty good for Chen. He's been involved in two ganks already. He's up to level three. He's probably feeling pretty confident at the moment. The pinging Jakiro being sneaky there. Trixie has managed to pick up all of 60 experience. Looks like he's going to race Jakiro to the rune. Templar Assassin. We'll find it ahead of him. See Shadowfin up there. So he's getting all the free farm he wants, but now we've got no, those are just illusions. Never mind. I'm kind of expecting Weaver to get harassed here pretty soon just because they have got the counter wards. In fact, they've thrown one down already just so Quinnipan can harass Weaver back down there when he wants to. Still an illusion. Looks like they are trading some hits in mid. Trixie still struggling. This is pretty common for Trixie when he plays the solo tight hunter. This happens quite frequently. He winds up under level for a while, but he generally catches up. As soon as they take their attention away from him, he generally just starts farming really quickly with Anchor Smash. But for now, he'll just focus on ganking, just trying to sneak in a few levels whenever he can. That said, already he's being harassed by Jakira once again. Meanwhile, it looks like there is a gank being set up on mid again. Smoke gank from Chen. He's got another net creep too. As it looks like Tame My Wild is getting ready. He's just creep blocking there. He's looking. He's scouting out for the four minute room, possibly. And they might actually just change. It looks like they've changed their mind. They're just going to go for Weaver. Now he is sitting next to a Rev Ward there. And they should be able to get this. And Net Creep is in range. Queen of Pain jumps in. There's the Net Creep. There's the slow as well. Weaver is likely to die. The DOTs are going to bring him down. Unless he can try and teleport out. Nope, there's the first nuke. Queen of Pain bringing him down. There's three kills in a row for the Fnatic. And Virtus Pro looking a little shaky indeed. Enchantress now camping for the 4 minute rune. Trixie also hoping he can get his hands on this. Unlike he's going to try and race him in though. He's going to go in preemptively looking for this rune. Won't find it though. It spawns bottom. It is a regen. And uh, Trixie actually trying to trade hits here with Enchantress. Possibly a terrible idea. As you see the amount of damage he's taking is kind of bad. Error on the other hand, looking for the 4 minute rune. And he will find it bottom. The regen there. Going to bottle that up. The NS just skulking about the jungle. Unfortunately, Trixie kind of surrounded here, getting boxed in. No, he will actually walk no, back away in time. Doesn't actually get... Oh, he's coming close. Jigiro is just waiting. He's just waiting. He's waiting for Trixie to step up. As soon as Trixie steps up, he's going to jump him. Trixie's still level one. Four or five minutes in. He's probably feeling the pain here. A bit of pulling happening. A lot of pinging happening as well. Here with the oh wow okay, stacking this quite a bit. They're getting ready for Shadow Fiend. Shadow Fiend is going to come through and he is going to rip down these stacks. See Enchantress also helping. Out. He's going to rip down these stacks with rays. They might even do the smoke trick as well if necessary to cover him. But right now they're going for another gank on Weaver. Weaver about to be suppressed some more, and this is going to be a very very fat Shadow Fiend. It looks like they're quite happy for it. And there's a the net there as well. Weaver with a slow on him as well. No escape. Burst nukes to boot. Not much you can do about that. Counter wards, nets. Weaver is going to have a very, very bad... This is what I mean about this. Uh, this is the issue. He's going to want to underfarm going to mid game. At least if you had something like a Windrunner who gets underfarm and gank lock, or even Trixie. Like, they've got something to offer in the mid game. If Trixie just gets a few levels, or Windrunner just gets a few levels, they have something to offer. In this scenario, Weaver has literally nothing to offer his team. you got Shikuchi and that's it. That's, that's pretty useless, to be honest, in the mid game. Bottom it's a very selfish set of items. But that said, it looks like they're quite happy to let this roll at the moment. They're focused on getting a bit of farm on Panda. And then it's going to be... The mid-game is going to be all about Shadow Fiend. It's going to be all about this Shadow Fiend. If he gets these stacks down, though, there's the Ice Path. They're going to try and hold down this push. Trixie finally getting at least a little bit of experience. Templar Assassin popping some runes there. Pops a regen. In the meantime, Brewmaster bottles up a double damage. Templar Assassin Arrow just doing some damage there. Team Mobile might decide against clashing there. Meanwhile, top lane, Ice Path once again misses. They're going to dive in there with Shikuchi, not doing a whole lot. This tower continues to get chipped away at. 
Queen of Pain, kind of low on mana, has got an early Midas there. And this tower likely to fall. Can they sneak in a dice question? There's the ice path. They get the deny. Nicely done. Venomous Gal misses completely. And they will manage to walk away, although Weaver has put himself in harm's way. Do they have a they have counter wards up? Weaver definitely in danger. Another Shikuchi there, throws down the counter ward, but no mana to slow him. Chen sends an ally home. And Weaver should be able to escape. Just gonna bring up Gold Shark. Currently 2k in favor of the rate. Not too surprised. The four kills up, as well as the fact. But they're picking up tower after tower. That's it. Look at Brewmaster. Untouchable. He's actually maxed out Drunk and Hayes just to help deal with Templar Assassin. And you notice when he throws that out, she can't hit crap. But these stacks... Oh, they've actually ripped through them already, I think. No, surely not. That might have actually been Jakiro. Who took them, and he does inside the misclick. Surely a misclick. Probably feeling a little bit silly there. And now we've got the pandas now popping their ult. It looks like she can't get away. Gets stunned by a rock. Should be able to beat down Templar Assassin. Nicely done there. Brewmaster getting a little bit of revenge. And that's the first kill for VP. Finally managed to put it up on the board. Meanwhile, this is more of an issue here. The Dire. I think that says somebody took some stacks. Somebody must have taken some stacks. In fact, I need to find it. Radiance Middle Tower. Who the hell Under took attack. them? I'll just bring up the experience per minute there. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Kind of hard to tell actually. Someone's taking these stacks, attack. and I don't know who it is. Queen of Pain, though, early Midas is definitely helping her out quite a lot. Meanwhile, Shadowfiend is up to 64 and 31. I think it must have been it must have been him or Enchantress. She also I must have been. Oh wow, she's got a Midas already. Okay, I'm going to say it was Enchantress, possibly using a whirlwind trick with a smoke. See Jakiro there, still he's feeling kind of underfarmed at the moment. It's to be expected. The arrow just popping down, pre uh, just aggressive. Sonic traps, they're pretty normal stuff. He can't really do a whole lot with them at the moment. He really needs, he needs the BKV or the mana style just to get rid of this Drunken Haze because every fight he goes into, he's getting hit by this Drunken Haze. He's not going to be able to hit anything. This Brewmaster is being such a pest with that. It's not so much the fact that he can't hit the heroes. Right now, it's becoming quite difficult for him to even get any farming done because of it. The slow gets thrown down. There, another drunken haze on him. Error will need to back off. Both teams are going rather passive at the moment. Thunderclap being used to harass. It looks like there are more stackings being done, and it looks like Enchantress is indeed doing this. And she's just using her crypt, thunderclapping down the easy camp. Shigeru now just using this to get his farm happening, and Weaver now going to teleport out, looks like he should be able to escape though, no stuns to disable, well they had a net actually, uh, but did not reach him in time. And again, Era just cannot touch anybody with this right now, miss after miss after miss. And Trixie has picked up, these early towers have managed, it means he's picked up these early boots, has picked these boots, already finished off his urn as well, and he's also level 4 now. Now there's an invisibility room top, Brewmaster is going to find it. Meanwhile, bottles that, and they are going to chase the Titan. Ray is doing a lot of damage out of Trixie, and it looks like Ammon is just going to slam on this tower. Meanwhile, Weaver. Weaver currently sitting on 11 and 1 at 10 minutes in. Definitely not where you want your carry to be. And compare that to Shadowfiend, who is farming up a storm. Already has his BK, already has his uh, parts of his BKB on the way, has got his Ogre Club, likely to get his Mithril Hammer in a minute as well. Unfortunately, Jakira walking over that ward spot, uh, Sonic Trap, they're getting spotted up. Throws up his own ward though, and Error having to back off. I'll say this much, or if he can land the Liquid Fire on Error, that will definitely help deal with Ice Path now, gets thrown in there, if they can get the auto, if get the Liquid Fire, he actually hasn't, this is an interesting build, he hasn't actually skilled Liquid Fire. Normally we see them skill at least one level liquid fire. Eight helps with pushing, although Brewmaster now goes for the split there. And there's the dual breath. They're going for the damage here. Hanny likely to drop. The DOTs are too much. And he does go down. Error now in some serious trouble. Macro Pyre as well. There's the rock. Chuck rocks. Chuck rocks. The damage is too much. Error gets dropped. And now they're on the warp path. They're chasing up the channel though. There's the recombine. And now Brewmaster needs to back off. Enchantress healing up. Popped nature's attendance. I think she's partially picked up the orchid. Uh, the oh wow, okay. 
Unfortunately, the Brewmaster actually going back in will actually just decide to teleport out. I was going to say, she's probably picked up the, uh, she's probably picked up the Hanuman. Not only does she benefit from the attack speed, but all round, it's also just an annoying item to have against Chen. Every time Chen tries to bring creeps to the battle, when Chen just can just take one in the mid-game. And Mook, Mook, it's it's not so much Brewmaster has more CS as last year, but it's the fact that you see the Drunken Haze, he maxed that first, and every time TA comes into lane to last hit, he throws that on her, and she's looking at like a 75% miss chance. She can't hit shit, literally. She couldn't hit the... She's at Stormtrooper level in terms of accuracy. In fact, almost, I would say almost worse than Storm... Like, you see that maxed out, it's 75% chance to miss. She cannot last hit effectively with that. Surprisingly, she's got as much as she does, to be honest. Considering how annoying Brewmaster has been. It's proving to be a very nice counter. Shadowfiend, now they're going for the burst damage on Shadowfiend. The oldest up of Queen of Pain as well. Had tricks, he managed to get in there with the slow. That could have been lights out for Shadowfiend, but as it is... There is not enough disable stacked on him, but they need a hard stun really to bring him down quickly. And now just going to quickly grab some farm in the jungle while he's harassed in his lane. Almost has his BKB done and dusted too. And Brewmaster appears to be going for an early blink just to initiate. This is not a bad choice at all. 2.1k in the bank. Very close indeed. On the other hand, <laughs> we're still trying to farm. Not a lot he can do with this lane, still trying to even get his power treads up and running. 101 CS at 13 minutes in at the moment. My god, Shadowfiend, looking quite scary. The only hero ahead of him is Hanny at the moment. Hanny currently sitting on 60 CS, however, he's got a bunch of kills, I believe. Yeah, he's 3 and 1, plus, of course, he has the Hand of Midas, which is obviously helping things out quite a bit. And as well, two towers as well on top of that. That's the other big deal. The towers are a pretty damn big deal. And there we go, Brewmaster has his blink done and dusted. Queen of Pain appears to be going for a Lincoln's first. Has opened up with the Perseverance. It could be a Bloodstone, but I think it's more likely to be the Lincoln's. They're just going to try and dodge any kind of CC that they have. Almost feel in this case, again, I honestly do prefer the BKB over the Lincoln's. It just, and Lincoln's really, really expensive for what it gives. You see there, Oh. Again, Weaver just taking a lot of damage there to the spill. Bit of pinging from KSI, looking for trouble in mid. They might be able to find some too. Brewmaster is here. His blink is ready. He could try and cause a fight. A smoke up though. A wraparound smoke there from Chen as well as Venomance. So they're going for Brewmaster. Brewmaster has his ult. Doesn't matter now though. Pops it, Magic Wand. There we go. There's the split. He will he counterattack. Looks like he will actually counterattack. He's going for Chen. I don't think he's got enough backup though. May need to cancel this. And they will see. He sends the Earth Panda back just in case. Suicides his other pandas in to try and cause some damage. But I don't think they're going to find a kill here. And the Earth Panda safely ensconced back on his own side of the own side of the river. Meanwhile, though, Jakira and Shadowfin push quite deep into the enemy side of the town. They throw down the macro pirates. Not quite enough. Hand of God. Dual fire as well. The dual breath is enough. Jakira sneaks in a kill. He's got a teleport. He will escape. No. Chen stomps. Quit of pain. That's overkill there. Yeah, she could have used that. I mean, she had her ult up now. This could be used on Shadowfin. They could take down Shadowfin quite easily. See, 400 health. And she may actually get him anyway, although it's close. They get each other! Queen of Pain gets the kill. Unfortunately, Shadowfin explodes in her face. So they trade kills there. And I mean, slight overkill on the Centaur, on the, on the Jakira thing. But you know what? It was pretty closely timed. So I think she just threw it just because she couldn't really see... Bandit now charging in there, gonna slow down. Uh, nope. Desemp Templar Assassin will walk away from this fight. Venomance now gone for early Tranquil Boots. Chen just saving up 1k in the bank. I think he might just go for Arcanes in a second. He does need the mana pull increase. Templar Assassin, actually, this is an interesting build for her. Went for phase uh, went for power treads instead of phase. Normally we see the phase boots on Templar Assassin just for the raw early damage plus some ability, but you know what? Power Treads have their own place. E either set of boots is, is reliably okay. Honestly, I do prefer... Personally, though, I prefer Phase. The Sonic Trap and Slow. No split either for the Brewmaster as well. Queen of Pain charging in here near. The Dust gets popped on top of that. Jakira, though, Macro Pie, Ice Path as well. Look at the damage being dealt out there. But it looks like we've got Refraction up in 7 seconds. Jakira going to have to teleport out. As they bring down Tide Hunter Trixie, they do trade a Brewmaster for a Trixie there, Tide Hunter. 
So we see the new little worm bugs on error. Oh wow, Bandit barely escaping. Meanwhile, Enchantress picks it. It's actually a Mask of Madness built on Enchantress. The attack speed built on Enchantress. Oh, I've s this this apparently is getting a little bit more common. I honestly feel it's kind of it's a desperate gimmicky build. In personal opinion, honestly, my my opinion means little compared to say say KSI. I believe last time we saw VP play, they actually did this again. I honestly feel it's somewhat gimmicky. It is a very dangerous glass can build. You see, look, Enchantress has 680 health. That is not not a lot. You throw on a 30% damage increase. She gets in the middle of a fire, and then Queen of Pain incidentally clips her with some nukes. And that's pretty much like Enchantress will just dead. Dead like that. She gets hit by Tidehunter, Queen of Pain, while she has um, the Mask of Madness popped. She's, it's lights out. There's nothing she can do about it. So I feel this is a very dangerous, very gimmicky build. So I, that's why I don't like it. I feel there are safer options. That said, it does, like, I can see the logic behind it. The attack speed buff with Impetus is insane. See, attack speed is one of those things. When you have a critical mass of damage, it is actually increasing attack speed is one of the most cost-effective ways of dealing out damage. And if you were a Diablo, a Diablo player, you would know this just because it was so damn powerful, just stacking attack speed. You would see like a 15% attack speed would basically be this equivalent or better in terms of de in total DPS increase compared to a... Uh, a much higher tier item. But anyway, going back to this game here, and Weaver now trying to beat up on Hanny here. Hanny now running as Enchantress actually denies Jakira. Queen of Pain though, countering though with her own Sonic Wave. Blinks out there. And now they're going to try and bring down Chen. Chen actually very low in terms of a health. Can they bring him down? Tide under here. He's got Ravage. He might decide to pop it. Not yet. Waiting for the critical moment. He's going to wait for the BKBs to go away. This BKB doing a lot of damage there. Tide Hunter. Can he get in time? No. Error goes down. Now they're diving in behind the first tier tower. And Shadow Beam pops Requiem, does a fair bit of damage, there's Jakira still dead, although it looks like Queen of Pain screams down Weaver, Weaver goes too deep, can they bring down Tamai while Tamai down very low, Cast are not getting focused here, they pop Dust for no particular reason there, I actually, I actually have no idea why they pop Dust, I think it was again another misclick there, Queen of Pain blinking out, down goes Tyner as well, I was going to say, the only invisible hero is dead. Not really worth it, I think it was probably a misclick once again. Now Virtus Pro going to town here. This is it. It is a very risky build. I think honestly they're doing it just because they realize there is only one good stun on the enemy team and it is Ravage. That said, it is still very, very risky. I, I think a BKB is definitely in short order. The Enchantress needs a BKB pretty damn soon. Or she's going to get hit by a Ravage, then Queen of Pain and die. A horrible, painful death. Hanny though, opening up, looks like he's going for the Lincoln again. Just, ew, it's another thing I hate, but you know what? As they're built, they make it work, but I know why he's doing He's picking up that Lincoln. He's just trying to get rid of any of the last vestiges of uh, CC. Obviously, this will help the bro avoid the Brewmaster causing issues, but at the same time, it's going to delay any form of a Hex or even just a flat-out BKB. Like, you can see, the thing is, just a flat-out BKB would prevent a lot of things. It would prevent Enchantress from using Impetus on her. It would prevent all the Razors from doing damage. It would prevent the, the Requiem from doing damage. It would just prevent a lot more than a simple Lincolns. Lincolns will prevent, say, a rock being tossed out of by Brewmaster or being cycloned out of the fight. But you know what? BKB also stops that. I really feel like that's why the Chinese stopped building Lincoln Spheres, just because they're very expensive for what they do. But as it is... That it appears to be what Hanny is going after. Another. Roshan now going to be beat up here by Virtus Pro. They will clean this up. And they're actually motioning for a wraparound gank. They want to actually approach from the rear. It's going to be a little bit slow though because Roshan gets cleaned up nice and easy there. They pop a Sonic Trap just because they can. And they will give it to Shadow Fiend. And Chantress is going str uh, This This. Uh, that could be a BKB. Or it could be for Arganims, either or. In this case, I almost feel like Enchant Chaos is just going to go balls to the wall here. It's gonna, you know what? This is We're going to man mode this. Let's just go straight for the Arganims. Shadow Fiend out. Looks like he's working in his mana style. This is pretty stock standard. For all the weird builds that are being popped out, BKB, then mana style. That is pretty much the stock standard build for Shadow Fiend. 
And I like this from... Ch I think that's Enchantress doing... Or is that Chen? That could actually be Chen. I'm not sure. It's fine. It is, it is actually Chen's there being used defensively to hold them off. But so I thought that was Enchantress being used to knock off the fractions from Error. See a teleport out there to the top lane. They are going to try and hold off that counter push. Not much Hanny can do. He has to back up. Meanwhile, the middle push does dissolve as Virtus Pro decide to back off. Chen is just going to farm away with the Mask Man. Chen actually charging into... I think Chen needs to be careful. Chen actually has a bit of backup. Gets stunned though by the Centaur. Surprise attack there by Enchantress' Centaur. Hanny's still busy up in the top lane just trying to push and farm up there. Radiance On the meantime, Brewmaster headed towards mid. Another teleport out there. They are going to gun here for Shadowfiend. Shadowfiend can BKB up and just teleport if he wants to, although it's not going to happen. He says, you know what? I've got an Aegis. I'm just going to use it. We may need to BKB and teleport out now, though. This is looking rather dangerous. He's going to BKB. Decides not to teleport, though. We'll just tank it. And he should be able to walk away from this. Creeper going to knock the refraction off there. He's baiting for the counterattack, but it looks like Fnatic, they know there is a problem coming and they decide to back off. They know there's trouble coming. Meanwhile, Enchantress is still farming. Easy enemy jungle. Another 1200 in the bank. Error. Oh man, he's kind of under farmed. I'm looking for a blink dagger. He's getting close, so once he gets his blink dagger, we'll sort out his mobility issues. Which he definitely, this is something he's suffering from right now. We just cannot get in there. They're motioning for a wraparound gank again. That might be coming. Error now getting spotted up by the worms. Queen of Pain now jumping away. At the moment, Fly is somewhat out of position. Fly is likely to get jumped here in a second if he's not careful. He could quite easily get hit by an ice part, so he needs to be very, very careful about getting too close to this. Meanwhile, the counterattack is coming from the radiant side. They're getting ready to defend against this. Shadowfin now has got his mana, pops out the mana split, and they will take this. No, Venomaster sneaks in a deny. Very nicely played, using the Plague Wards. Oh, he got that. Wow. He actually took that deny with two Plague Wards. That's actually pretty nasty. And somewhat lucky. Now I've got the stun there on Error. Error in some serious trouble. Gonna meld there. Gets spotted up by Dust. Dust manages to bring him down. This time around, no missed. <laughs> I was gonna say, that's the third Dust I've seen. And I actually got it right this time. Somebody didn't accidentally click it. This tower mid is under siege in a lot of trouble. Meanwhile, Trixie just gonna counter push top lane. Says, alright, screw this. Oh, oh, Ice Path again. Chen popping hand of God. It looks like there's a counterattack. There's Ravage. It looks like Poison Nova goes out as well. Shadowfin goes for the Requiem. Only clips Trixie. Trixie though getting cleaned up by Brewmaster. A Ray's also being thrown in there for good measure. But as it is, Mid Tower likely to fall in a second. Can Venomancer pull off another sneaky deny? No, he cannot. Shadowfin is going to take that one for a change. Brewmaster recombining. And they will teleport out to defend this top push. Well, mess of pings here in the jungle saying, let's go get him. Enchantress, it looks like she will indeed finish off the Argon Scepter. She's going full man mode here, and the Queen of Pain now gets hit by Impetus as well as Ice Path. He has no chance to escape. Enchantress, so speedy. Uh, there's no chance for no tell there. He is very much Enchantress just trying to get range here. If she had her imp if she had her Argon, she actually could have thrown it. The Impetus over the trees there and cleaned him up. I actually want to get that shipped out ASAP. Trixie now looking, he's looking for, he's just going for some cheap items, cheap items, might pick up some drums if he can. But he's got the cheap brace there, also has his arcane, so he's pretty much set in that regard in terms of mana issues. And now the die getting ready to push on the bottom tower, Fnatic currently being drilled by Virtus Pro. Shadowfin also has some life still now, has picked up the Helm of the Dominator. I think it comes down to Shadowfin and Brewmaster. I think it just comes down to the fact that Brewmaster is going to be so... Brewmaster and Shadowfin are occupying so much of Fnatic's attention that Enchantress is just being left to do her own thing, even though she's probably the most... Tar she, she's the hero that probably should be target fired the most during these fights, just because... Well, she activates Mask of Madness, she's, she's so damn squishy. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. 
Bottom tower being drilled down here. It looks like Fnatic are just going to sacrifice the tower. They're hoping for a counter push on mid. Trixie just trying to cause some trouble here. They will need him back at the bottom tower in just a second. He's got 20 seconds on Ravage. Should be ready for when they clash. Enchantress, her Arganims is done now. Level 3 ult with Arganims. That's looking pretty damn nasty. And this is what I mean. Uh, I feel like the BKBs, if they were done, it would pretty much nullify Enchantress's DPS during these fights. As well as Shadowfiend's. All of his magical damage just would not be affected. And bottom tower goes down. They need Trixie back here. ASAP. He can pour it in and try and save the day. Here he comes. Here comes Tidehunter. Can we get a good Ravage? There's a BKB from Shadowfiend. Doesn't give a damn. Pops his ultimate, cleans up Tidehunter, down goes Lanara as well, inside the macro pile, and now Venomancer about to get set up for a kill. Gets Yules, uh, gets hit, gets whirlwinded there by the Storm Panda, an easy kill. GG is caught by Fnatic, no blaming them there, they were definitely outplayed, outmatched this match. VP off to a shaky start, but cleaned up in the end. Shadowfin obviously got way too far, and Enchantress with an unconventional build to the rescue. <laughs> There we go. Oh, error. Barely escaping there. GG has been called. Just waiting for Fnatic to quit out of this game so we can get the uh, end game screen. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. It's been Triumph Man Cast in Premier League Season 3. This has been Virtus Pro versus Fnatic. Game number one. Virtus Pro cinching this game quite nicely in the end there. And remember. This is definitely, like, Dota is a game of potential comebacks. You make some mistakes, you can, or, you know, you make some mistakes, or it's a game of swings, basically. In this case, Shadowfin was left to farm. He got his farm that he needed. He came back, came out with a storm. Enchantress had a nice build. Then in this case, not a lot of stuns. Managed to avoid getting CC down or target find nuked. It worked. It definitely worked. Like, it's, it's doable. It's just dangerous. Extremely risky. You've got to have balls to make this kind of build. You're so squishy. You're so, so squishy. And you, as soon as you get started getting clipped by airways, it's lights out. But as it is, you know what? Made it work. That's all that mattered. Alright then, so guys, we'll be moving into game number two. There will be a short five minute break. Please stick around. But game number two, Fnatic versus Quanta coming up. Also, remember, for any updates on the Premier League, Head, over on, head on over to the Premier League.eu. You can check out oops, all the news. You can check out our YouTube channel. It is on the social media bar. And there are all the results, all the upcoming matches. And again, also, big shout out to our sponsors, Steel Series and Twitch TV. They are, of course, a big help in organizing and running 